Hello YouTube, welcome back to another fun-filled and exciting episode of Easy Prepping. A uh, viewer mentioned that he thought the audio was a little weak in my last uh, video, so I noticed the battery in my mic was getting a little low, so I've replaced it. I've also changed the setting on the mic, so if you have any issues at all with the, any of the quality on my videos, please leave me a comment and I will address it. Today's video is about uh, different types of SHTF. A viewer asked what did I think the aftermath of SHTF would be like and really that depends on what type of SHTF we could get hit with. You know my wife uh, gave me a thought that uh, perhaps everyone in the audience doesn't know what SHTF means and uh, us preppers use that term a lot. So on the off chance that there are some out there that don't know what it means, and to keep my channel at PG-13 or better rating, I will say that it means when the stuff hits the fan. There's another term out there uh, that preppers use. It's the end of the world as we know it. And if you put all those letters together, it sounds something like Tiatwaiki. Uh, yeah, you can't pronounce it. In giving some thought on how to present types of SHTS, I've decided to break it down into two overall categories. First, there's natural disasters, and then there's man-made disasters. And in each of those, it breaks down further into short-term or long-term SHTS scenarios. Short-term would be those that... Uh, you're going to need days or weeks worth of preps to get through. Long term, I'm saying you're going to need months, if not years, worth of preps to get through. The first of the man-made SHTF scenarios would be the pandemic. Uh, I can't go into detail on this without probably raising a lot of flags at YouTube and getting political which I've decided not to do on this channel. But we all remember the great toilet paper shortage. <laughs> After that, uh, we have the an EMP. Uh, a man-made EMP would be one from a nuclear detonation. Uh, it would only take three nuclear detonations in the atmosphere, one central, one east, one west, to completely devastate our country a man-made EMP would affect microelectronics, uh, your computers, your phones, uh, and we use computers to control everything. Our power grids, our water systems, our railroad transportation, everything is controlled by computers. Uh, I can't even guess how devastating it would be for us to get hit with a massive EMP in this country man-made SHTF is war. Definitely man-made. Everybody's familiar now with the situation between Russia and Ukraine. What everybody may not be familiar with is how it has greatly, if not stopped, diminished uh, the world's food supply. Thousands of tons of grain, specifically wheat, uh, were if not stopped completely greatly diminished, and that's a worldwide effect from the war with those two. Another is the fuel that normally would come out of those two countries has also been cut off or greatly diminished. I've heard that a lot of people in Europe are having a really rough winter trying to stay warm because of the war with Ukraine and Russia. Another potential side of the uh, war SHTF is a uh, countries attacking each other with nuclear weapons. There are a lot of long-standing disputes between countries out there and those countries are nuclear capable. I refer to uh, Pakistan and India, uh, Iran and Israel. If any of those were to escalate into a nuclear conflict even though it's half a world away, 
there is a theory on what is called nuclear winter and how even a few nuclear devices set off half a world away could create a nuclear winter, greatly reducing the temperature of at the surface here of the Earth. And uh, ash would block the sun, lowering the temperature, which would decrease growing seasons, means less food. And next up we have hyperinflation, which if what the U.S. is in right now, the world, is not hyperinflation, I think it's pretty close to it. Anybody that's gone to the grocery store over the past couple years knows that we definitely have some major inflation going on. Hyperinflation, I think of more as uh, being a student of history, the after effects of World War I on the country of Germany. When the inflation was so bad, it took a wheelbarrow full of money to buy a loaf of bread. Paper money became just about worthless. Now the subject of uh, hyperinflation leads me to my next topic, which is economic collapse. I'm not talking about the inflation we're suffering now. I'm talking a complete economic collapse, which could come on slow or fast. Uh, fast would be the stock market crash of 1929 and how that basically caused the Great Depression that we went through for years. Well, our grandparents did. Uh, paper money becoming just about worthless. And if you think about it, all your money that's in a bank or in a savings establishment, uh, a fidelity for its existence, that's really nothing but ones and zeros in a computer. It's nothing that you could have to help you survive an SHTF. Which brings me to barter. Uh, in case of an economic collapse, which I think a lot of these other scenarios could cause an economic collapse, you need to look at what you have in your prepper stockpile that you could barter with. I plan on doing a whole video just on advice on what you should possibly stockpile for bartering potential. Next up is uh, well, terrorism. The uh, U.S. and even the entire world is way too familiar with terrorism. But looking at it from the U.S. point of view, I think our infrastructure system is entirely too fragile. Uh, look at recently just uh, some people with rifles shooting into power substations, how they took out AC power for a whole area for days. And any terrorist with a basic knowledge of our utilities, our infrastructure, uh, electric, water, rail, bridges, how easy it would really be for them to attack. That's, uh, that's scary. There's a reason to prepare if there's none other. Use that. Last on my list of man-made SHTF is civil unrest. What CNN refers to as mostly peaceful protest, I refer to as rioting. I left that to last because a lot, several of these other man-made catastrophes could lead to civil unrest. Uh, I know we've had way too much, as far as I'm concerned, civil unrest in this country, but you've got to look at, in an SHTS scenario, the people that aren't prepared, when they start getting hungry, when their kids start getting hungry. Well, I'm going to say that rational people, I predict, would become unrational. And that is an entire topic for another video, but it's something for you to uh, ponder on as you think about how you prepare. And then there's natural disasters causing SHTF scenarios. Uh, the first I'd like to cover would be the weather, which is predominantly how you should look at it is where you live. What is the weather like? 
uh, if you're in North Dakota, I doubt if you have to worry about hurricanes. But hurricanes are something that you have a lot of warning about. Definitely, you should be prepared to bug out if you live in a hurricane prominent area. The super typhoon I went through, there was no bugging out. I was on a small island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean called Guam. There was no bugging out. And next we have uh, the potential of tornadoes, which doesn't affect everybody in the country, but it does where I live. The wife and I have a weather alert radio in our bedroom, and boy is it loud. It will definitely wake you up. Also, when we built this house, under the front porch, the front porch is concrete, but there's a room under the front porch. If you saw my previous video where there was a concrete wall in the background behind me, I was inside the tornado shelter, which now I've also turned into a bomb shelter. Since there seem to be too many uh, mentally unstable people in the world that have a big red button. And kind of as a sideline to uh, the severe thunderstorm is flash floods. It's uh, not too long ago, eastern Kentucky, which I used to cover as a field service tech, I'm familiar with that area, was hit with some really bad flash floods. And I think that under most circumstances with a flash flood, they happen too fast for you to bug out. You just hang on and hope for the best. The last two uh, weather-related SHTFs I'd like to cover, most people may not think of as really an SHTF, but they are something you should be prepared for. The first is heat waves. Now, most of us have air conditioning, but SHTF scenario, are you going to have electricity to drive the air conditioning? Also, in conjunction with that, is droughts. I believe that uh, I heard that California grows 25% of the world's, not just the country's, the world's tomatoes. And they're in a seven year drought. Uh, when I heard this a while back, I stocked up on canned tomatoes. And then we have earthquakes, which uh, with what's going on in Turkey, uh, the last estimate I saw was over 33,000 dead now. That is a massive earthquake. And there are many sections of the United States which are prone to earthquake. I happen to be not too far from the New Madrid fault. I believe the maps I looked up put me in the severe damage area. But if you live in Memphis, St. Louis, anywhere in between, up and down through that Mississippi Valley area in the center of the country. God help you if that quake goes. I believe in learning from history and how best to prepare based on that history. And looking at the new Madrid quake and information on it that happened in the early 1800s, uh, they can only estimate that the quakes hit between seven and eight on the Richter scale, but they went on for months, causing a more sustained damage. And then there was the Alaska quake, uh, the strongest ever measured in the US. It hit 9.2 on the Richter scale. And that's a doozy. Once again, that was in 1964, and it lasted for four minutes which to those people in that situation, that probably felt like an eternity. The last one I want to cover is the Great San Francisco Quake of 1906, where it estimated hit a 7.9 on the Richter scale. And although there was a lot of damage from the quake, most of the deaths estimated to be around 3,000 came from the fires of the collapsed buildings and also left an estimated quarter million of a people, of the people there, homeless. In conjunction with earthquakes, I'd like to mention volcanoes as a possible SHTF scenario. Uh, we do have a history of volcanoes in this country. Uh, Hawaii coming to mind, Mount St. Helens, 
And then there's the Yellowstone Super Caldera. Uh, I believe the last time it blew was back at 1350 BC. But I've read a, some fictional books the, by writers that did their research. One was an author named Harry Turtledove, wrote a series of three books on what he thinks the aftermath of that would be like. And you may think you don't live anywhere near Yellowstone, but the main damage that I think could happen from that would be from the ash. Even where I'm at in southern Indiana could get is six inches even a foot of that ash. And volcanic ash, is, think of it as a finely ground sandpaper, a very fine a powder, but very gritty. Vehicles will not function. Your air filters in your vehicles will clog almost immediately. And then if you try running without the air filter, that grit gets inside the motor and it ceases to function. So most of the country would be covered with this ash. And also under natural disasters, I'm going to call pandemics, which are a long-term SHTF. I've uh, made some notes of some historical data. The Spanish flu of 1918 infected one third of the world's population, killed an estimated 20 to 50 million people. The H3N2 flu of 1968 estimated 1 million dead. HIV and AIDS uh, gives the date of 1981 but infected an estimated million, has infected an estimated million, 65 million people. Then we get into things like Ebola, which Ebola doesn't spread near as fast, but it's a whole lot worse. Uh, I think in an Ebola situation, your main, your best bet is to isolate because it has to be through contact. But the mortality rate that's what percentage of people will die, is anywhere from 25 to 90 percent, considering on the strain of Ebola. The last topic I'm going to cover is the EMP, natural disaster EMP. This type is caused by a solar flare or a corona mass ejection. Think of the northern lights. That is solar radiation hitting the atmosphere, causing that very beautiful lights, but a massive solar flare would hit the earth with an EMP that doesn't just last a millisecond, it lasts a lot longer. Seconds into, I've even heard minutes. And because of the, I'm not a scientist on this, but the frequencies, the your cell phone would be fine. Your computers, it's fine. But the power grid would take a disastrous hit. I've read some information that state that all of our power lines would just act like massive antennas and in some cases could even melt. And transformers, if you look at it, almost any power pole, there's a transformer sitting up there on top of that thing. And if your electric grid is underground, they sit on the ground. But still, they would be fried. Hundreds of thousands, if not millions of transformers fried. Our power grid would be down for years because you know where we get our transformers from? China. In closing, I'd like to say how you take this information and use it to better your preparations. Depends a lot on where you live, how much of these affect you, how strong. But it is better to be prepared than not. In closing, I'd like to say if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. If you think this video was informative and beneficial, please click the thumbs up button. And always remember to hope for the best and plan for the worst.